Hi, this is going to be an update video. I recently posted a YouTube short showing this old motor. I say old, it's, it's probably getting on for 100 years. I can't exactly date it. There is a patent date on there of 1914, 1915, but I don't expect it was actually made then, uh, but probably not a long while after. Uh, reason being because of the type of motor. It's a, it's a single phase, as, as you would easily be able to get nowadays, but it's a repulsion start and then induction run. So the gist of it is that there is a commutator uh, that's uh, in the back. You can see it there. And that gets the motor running. And then there's a centrifugal clutch, which then uh, disengages the uh, commutator. And then we're just then using the stator, uh, the stationary part, which is all the windings going on the outside. Uh, then that makes the rotor, the bit that spins uh, spin around okay so that's really um, a very great simplification I'm sure of all the detail uh, behind this but uh, I don't think that uh, this sort of motor has been made for quite a long while now now uh, when I got it and uh, I bought it from a guy who uh, informed me and I've no way of confirming this but he said that it came from the Sherborne estate in uh, originally came from the Sherborne estate in Dorset uh, most likely he, he's right okay um and uh yeah so it came in an absolutely filthy condition the thing is that both the the rear and the front have um these sort of oil wick uh oil wicks that go all the way around inside here okay if i pop these off which i'm not going to do you'd see that so it's like a like a padding sort of thing and uh then so you fill up uh the oil from the top and then that's keeping this shaft lubricated all the time, which is fantastic. I mean, there's, there's no sign of wear on the shaft at all. And then I think if you put enough oil in, then you'll actually see the level there. OK, now I haven't actually put too much oil in because I'm going to be selling this motor soon. And I wouldn't want the thing to be um, spilling oil everywhere. But uh, yeah, so um, it would probably be a good idea, depending on how much you're going to use it, uh, just, just to top that up with a few drops. Um, it is oiled up enough that uh, it's not going to cause any harm. Most definitely not. And uh, anyway, so um, just getting back onto the, the point that I was making earlier. So when I got this, um, there was a lot of oil, a lot of oil, both uh, front and back. And then that had got mixed with wood dust. And so basically you could, you could hardly see the uh, commutator. It was it was absolutely filthy. So I had to do a complete strip down of the motor. And in the end, it was it was really pretty terrible, actually, um, the oil and the wood dust and everything. So in the end, I resorted. I thought, well, I'm either going to um, ruin it or make a good job of this. But I actually completely immersed the thing in hot, soapy water. I, I, it was all stripped down. No, I didn't immerse it like this. All stripped down to, to the component parts. Uh, dish soap, you know, washing up liquid um hand hot water so you know it's pretty pretty warm but um not not boiling water um and then a very soft brush and sponges and then basically wiped all the windings down and uh prior to doing that uh, i did an insulation test so the resistance between the windings and and uh ground and i think i had something like about 10 mega ohms at the time but of course as soon as i'd washed the thing then we were down into like I don't know, about 5k or something like that which is what you would expect. Now, over the course of about a week, uh, I wash. Uh, I, I kept on checking uh, the motor, and um, and it was slowly rising up. And then after something like about a week, maybe it was just over a week, it's now back up to ten megaohms. So that that's good. Okay. So um, so long as um, it's earthed, um, it should be entirely safe. Now I say entirely safe. Actually, what I would say is. Um, a motor like this doesn't meet any modern safety standards at all. Uh, you could, you know, you could easily fit your fingers right in there. I mean, they've, they've styled it. So it's a beautiful looking old motor. Um, but by modern standards, it's very much an open frame um, and uh, it wouldn't be allowed. Now, I've got a clamp meter uh, at the moment, which is just, uh, well, there's the neutral. It doesn't make any difference. The neutral going through the clamp meter. 
And I'm not going to do any testing of the insulation. I've already done that. It's 10 megrams. And so what we're going to do, we'll just have a quick look at, at its start. It does spark a little bit. Um, the brushes are actually good. I think it's just the, the nature of this motor that there's going to be very small amount of sparking. And I'll just start it up. There we go. Okay, it's only very brief. It's just whilst the, um, the, the first part, um, I was going to say the first phase, that's a little bit misleading. Uh, the first part uh, during starting, and um, and it's pulling, what's it pulling? Uh, it's pulling well, under two amps there. And if you have a look and it's rated, you'll see that there's, there's um, two voltages here. You can, do, you, can wire, you can wire it up for 110 or 220. And so presumably 4.4 amps is at um, 110, 2.2 is at 220 and yeah, well, we're going to be slightly over 220 volts here. I, I would expect about 230, 240, and it's just under just under two amps. And there's no load on this at all uh, either. Okay, so let me just stop it, and then we'll do a start because it's quite interesting. It doesn't actually pull much current when the thing starts. In fact, let me just focus there, and you'll see. Hopefully, you'll see if things click back in. I quite like that sound actually. Okay, now this time I'll start the motor up and you can watch the clamp meter. So what did that go up to? I think it was, I didn't quite catch that, but I think it was about three and a half amps or something like that, which is um, very modest really for a motor that's, that's starting. Now you'll notice, let me just turn this off before I put my, and unplug it before I put my fingers anywhere near this. You'll notice that on the back here, there's this set screw and there's two settings for this. So if I were to undo this, undo the screw and then move this, this is a slider which goes down to the next setting, which is there, then you've reversed the direction of the motor. OK, so if it's if it's up, then the motor is actually going to be going around that way. And if it's down, then the, the motor is going to the spindle is going to be up going that way. So it's really super simple to uh, change direction on this motor and that's about it so um, yeah I personally I wouldn't be putting it in uh, a machine nowadays I think that you know with the open frame um, it's probably not a great idea although for many years no doubt people were using these successfully I think it's great for a collector uh, it's a bit of a museum piece but at least I can say that uh, you know it has been tested. Um, it looks OK. And oh, one last thing I should mention uh, the the uh, OK, so we got part of the cover here and there needs to be some sort of press steel uh, cover over there and then just two screws in. But I mean, that, that's, that's really, to be honest, just folding a piece of uh, sheet steel over there. Not difficult at all, but I, I'm going to leave it like that anyway. OK. So that's it for now. And if you've got any questions, please, um, please do post a comment. Thanks very much for watching.